Hello, this is Ben119 and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing the final part of the 120 star speedrun tutorial, which is part number 5. So in this part we're going to be doing Tippy, so that includes Cloud Stage, TikTok Clock, Rainbow Ride and Bowser in the Sky. So let's crack on with it. So last time we did Snowman's Land, that's where we started from now. And in the last 4 episodes we've done everything up until Tippy, so yeah. So the final time is 1.52 just to remind you. So this tippy is actually going to be a pretty good tippy. And something I made sure to do in this episode is I made sure to do safe strats. And you may be wondering why am I doing such safe strats. And it's just because tippy can be really difficult. And having to do loads of hard strats and movement can put a lot of pressure on yourself. Especially in like 120 star being such a long category, like by the time you get to this point in the run, you've been playing for like an hour and a half. So it's quite long anyway. So having to do loads of hard tricks as well near the end of a run on personal best pace, it's a lot of pressure. So I wanted to make, I wanted to show you that you could actually still get a really fast tippy with really easy movement. And I did so in this, in this clip here, in this video I mean. So we're just doing cloud stage now, and cloud stage doesn't really need much explaining, just follow the route that I'm doing, and just make sure to fly nice and fast, try not to be impatient as well, because being impatient on this level can lead to dying, and this is the worst level to die on in the game, because if you die you end up in the castle courtyard, and you have to go all the way back to the level and you lose about a minute, but if you die on any other level you just get kicked out of the level. Like 100 coin stars and this star is the worst to die on and maybe Bowser stages as well because they usually result in big time losses. Also with Tippy and upstairs a lot of time losses usually result in a death because I know with things like middle floor usually if you fall off a ledge you just land on a lower platform in the level or if you just like get hit by something it's not that big a deal but in TikTok clock and rainbow ride you gotta be very careful and if you usually make a wrong move where you hit like an invisible wall or you bonk on a wall or anything like that, you, you can easily die from having that. So just be very careful and make sure you're not losing concentration at this point. Because it can be easy on a good pace to just lose concentration, just think you're guaranteed a PB. But I think the key thing is never think that a PB is guaranteed even if you only like have to do Bowser in the Sky. Because I've lost PBs to throws as well. I've not lost 120 PB to throws yet, but I can see it's going to happen soon to me. So it's doing 100 coin. As you've noticed, I'm doing very safe movement for 100 coin. I'm not doing any crazy triple jumps. I'm not doing any crazy double wall kicks or anything like that. I'm just doing nice simple movement. Now this movement may look difficult, but trust me, this is nowhere near as hard as what people usually do and what I usually do in this level. So I'm doing the exact same route. I got the safety red at the start, and that's just so that if I get bad RNG on the boxes, I will be okay because I'll have an extra two coins. I would actually recommend doing that anyway, even if you're going for like more risky strats. Also, I don't do any of the flippers. I just stop time for all stars in this level because it makes this level so much easier and it's actually a really easy level if you do that if you're playing with like the time moving it can be a really difficult level to do because you have to do flippers three times in a row and you have to do like get a hand and you have to time like the hand long jump and you have to do other things moving but yeah if you stop if you stop time it is slightly slower obviously because jumping in on nines quicker and, and movements quicker but You'll see the strat that I'm going to go for here, and funnily enough, this is actually the movement that was used in the first ever 149. The person who got the first ever 149 used this movement in TikTok Clock, so... Before you complain about it being slow, do remember there is more record holders who have done movement like this. And movement nowadays is... there's so much more movement nowadays because there's so many more players and more things have been found and things have been compared there's like way more comparison videos on YouTube and stuff now so there's been so many more things that have been found and even like the last few years there's been things that have been found but like back in the day people probably just copied other other runners and just presumed certain things were faster than others like because the community was nowhere near where it is now but we're just gonna carry on right here sorry if none of that made sense it didn't really even make sense to me with that star there in the cage, I'd recommend long jumping to that cog and then stopping on the cog and jumping in. 
Because if you try doing another long jump, your angle can get like messed up, or you can bonk. If you dive in, you can dive in, but it is a really weird angle to do the diving. You have to land on the cog quite close to the edge. It's really strange to explain. I just stick to with doing what I'm doing here because it's really consistent and safe. Uh, so just go up here, go up these ones, uh, long jump off this hand up to here, and side flip over to the star. So we've got two left in TikTok clock. And I can, you can kind of see why this stage would be like the fastest stage, doing all the stars moving. So yeah, just going to go up here, and we're going to enter in 12 again. Entering in 12, this is another thing, be careful entering in 12, because the margin for 12 is actually quite small. Even though it looks big, it's actually quite small, like you have to enter where the hand is actually on the number 12. It can't even be in like the section between like 11 and 1. Like, wait, I know with like 9 and 3, they have like really big sections that you can uh, go into. But with the number 12, you have to jump in straight away, basically. Uh, with this star here, time jumps on moving bars, I recommend just wall kicking up to the third bar because it's a lot more consistent. And it's really nice. So it's got one more star in TikTok clock, and then we'll be moving on to Rainbow Ride and Bowser in the Sky. Uh, so we are quite near the end of the run, and if you stuck to this point, thank you. And I hope this actually helps helps you learn 120 star. If you're getting into 120 star, I hope this actually helps. Uh, you can obviously implement your own strats as well. I'm not stopping you. This is just like a guideline of like what you can do and what I think you should go for and what I think you shouldn't bother with yet. But if you do know certain strats that aren't in this, and if for some reason you don't feel comfortable going for anything in this, you don't have to obviously follow it. Like. Like from like the guide completely, you can add your own things. That's basically what I'm trying to say here. It doesn't matter too much as long as you do most of the stuff and you obviously prioritize movement and things like that. I think you'll be fine. I think you can do well in this game. So get the final Toad Star and then head up to Rainbow Ride. So I think the reason we do Cloud Stage first is because then we can exit Cloud Stage, go straight into TTC, and it's just better. Like the route probably doesn't matter too much in this, but everyone just does cloud stage and tick tock lock then rainbow ride, so that's what I'm doing here, because I think it's the fastest th order to do it in. I don't think it matters too much, like you could probably do rainbow ride, tick tock lock, then cloud stage, I think it'd be the same speed, but maybe not, because of the toad, you'd have to stop and get, you might mess up the timings on tick tock clock with the hand, oh well. So we're doing rainbow ride 100 coin first, I would recommend starting with 100 coin, because you can get the cannon open straight away. And it's like a really nice breather start because you have to wait on a carpet for a while. So I got an extra 5 coins in that first section and that means I don't have to deal with the Lakitu because that Lakitu can be really annoying because the coins can go everywhere and it can take a little bit to kill him. I just recommend skipping him if you can if you have extra coins, especially at this point in the run. You may have also noticed I didn't go for the triple jump on the moving ledge thing because you can triple jump wall kick off the moving platform but I decided not to go for it in this example just to show that it's not worth going for at this point. In 70 star, I'd definitely go for it because obviously 70 star you want to get all the time save you can get. In 120, if you can do it consistently and you feel confident enough doing it, like almost two hours into a run, do it. But if you're just going for like sub two hours, I honestly wouldn't recommend doing it if you don't know it already and you're not conf confident with it. So just get on the carpet as soon as possible because as soon as the carpet starts moving, like that's the good thing, you want to get the carpet moving first before you get the coins. It'll probably save a tiny bit of time, but yeah. So something I want to mention is Star Order, because I didn't really mention Star Order in TikTok Clock and Rainbow Ride. And that's because you can get the stars in whatever order you want. That's the cool thing about Tippy, like all of the stars, there's no main objectives to do to get stars. So you don't have to talk to NPCs, you don't have to activate certain events from previous stars. You can just get any star you want. And that's another reason why Tippy is so fun, because you can do the star order in whatever order you like. I always tend to try and get the 100 coin star out of the way in certain levels first, and then do the rest of the level. Sometimes I do the 100 coin star last in a level, sometimes I do the closest stars and the first away stars. It's random with each level, but for some reason I always tend to do each, each stage in the same order. And for some reason I don't even remember the order, but I just tend to just do it in that order anyway. So on this carpet, just don't mess about too much because I see a lot of runners messing about like flipping and kicking all over the place and you can do that if you want but don't do it if you think you could fall off easily because 
I've seen runners mess about on this carpet and they've accidentally fallen off because they've been messing about. Or they've missed coins and then they've killed their own runs. And it's just really embarrassing losing a run on this carpet because it's literally an auto-scroller. Important thing right there, make sure when you grab the 100th coin you're as far forward as you can be on the carpet and mash the A button as fast as you can as soon as the star is spawning because if you don't jump straight away then you'll have to try and grab the star and you might fall off the carpet Mario will fall all the way down and it's just not very good you want to grab the star and land back on the carpet so yeah and then just go up to that star you can wall kick off the side to get to the star and it looks really scary but it's not because if you miss the wall kick you end up landing back on the carpet so it's no big deal so we got five stars left in Rainbow Ride, and um, we used the pole for all of them. And I don't do Lakitu Bounce either, Lakitu Bounce is another strat that I guess is pretty difficult, and I didn't want to include it because it's a difficult strat, and it can put off new players, so I decided to do this movement here. I guess this is pretty difficult as well, but it's more movement based than strat based, and if you've run 70 star before, you're probably familiar with this strat here, where you long jump over to the cruiser. Just like that. It's pretty nice as well, it's really weird how it is found. And it is a miracle in a way how these platforms are placed so perfectly that you can long jump to them like that. It is amazing how this game is made. If it wasn't for a few things in this game, like parts of this run would be so much longer. For example, if Mario's wall kicking animation was like uh, Mario Odyssey where he couldn't like wall kick like at different angles. Like if he is wall kick like straight up out of every wall kick, things like going around that wall would be impossible and there'd have to be other ways of doing that. Or even if Mario's long jump speed and things like that were different, like certain strats wouldn't even be possible in this game. So it's amazing how all of this is possible. So just do the same thing again and long jump over to this cruiser here. Obviously be very careful in River Ride because it is very easy to fall off so if you don't feel comfortable going as fast as I'm going then obviously take it a little bit slower but yeah just make sure not to die on these tippy levels because deaths can result in a lot of time loss and not only that they can also make you like annoyed or they can make you stressed out and then you can end up playing worse from then from that. I feel like it, when I try and make mistakes, like it's obviously impossible just to be calm after every mistake. I still get annoyed, but I noticed in like the last year, or even like the last few months, when I've been getting better at 120, I've managed to keep a lot calmer, like a lot better. Like even when I've been on good paced runs and I've like made a stupid mistake that lost like 10, 10, 20 seconds, I still end up keeping calm. And I think that does really help because if you end up getting annoyed and you react to it, you end up doing something else and you do something else and then you end up playing really bad. I think it's the thing is with like races, like when you play races and you make one mistake, you end up just making loads and loads of mistakes and then you end up with a really bad time. But if you just like make one mistake, accept it and then just move on and just carry on playing how you were playing originally, you should be fine. It's a really hard thing to get into the habit of doing and it won't just happen straight away. No matter how good or bad you think you are with your emotions and controlling them while playing like speedrunning. But it's not something you can just do in a day, like once you do a lot of runs of this and you try feeling different ways and you play different ways, it's just going to come naturally and you'll get better at it over time, don't worry about it, everyone rages. Even top players like rage a lot of this game. But there we go. But especially, I did talk about this in one of the previous episodes, I think a lot of 120 star is about being able to handle the pressure of being ahead of PB. I do think that is definitely present in tip in like Tippy where we are now in like Rainbow Ride and TikTok Clock because it is so close to the end of the run and if you're on a good pace run you're going to be very nervous and if you let the nerves like take over you you're going to mess up but if you can just control it and you can play well still I think that's more important than even having like good strats just being able to play consistently without freaking out in Tippy like that's the main thing so we just finished Rainbow Ride at 150, so we can get a 152 now. So we're gonna head to Sky and we're gonna finish Sky and end up the run. So another thing I want to mention is in my PB, I ended up I was on 149 pace going into Tippy, so I got 133 SL, so that's 139, that's 149 pace, if you don't know. And in Rainbow Ride, I end up dying three times, and I think it's because I was so nervous because I knew 149 is my ultimate goal. And just knowing that 
there was a chance I could get 149. I just couldn't handle it and I ended up dying like a few times. And after I died, if anything, I found it a bit easier because I was like, right, this is like 151 pace, this is still good pace. I can still get a PB out of this. I was able to end up I was able to end the run in like a good way and get a nice PB. So that was fine. It's not as if I completely failed the run and didn't PB because that would have been awful. Okay, so final level Sky. I'm playing Sky safe as well. As you've noticed, I've played really safe strats in Rainbow Ride and TikTok Clock. And I've probably only lost about 40 seconds compared to like doing fast strats. If you do fast strats, you'll save like 40 seconds, maybe even a minute if you pull them off super, super well. But if you're not that confident at the tough strats and you can't even do many of them, and you're not ready to do them, then don't do them. Just stick to this kind of movement. It'll just be much better for you. Uh, right there, I didn't even go for like the the high up pole quickly, I went for like the big pole rather than the slope pole because it's easier to get. So long jump over here, avoid this gumba. Even that long jump there is risky. I don't think I even should have gone for that in this example because that's a pretty risky long jump right near the end of the run. Right here, do the side flip and go over here and get this star. And now we're going to enter the final fight. So the final fight is really nerve wracking because obviously you got to land throws to get your PB. But once you've done the fight several times, once you've practiced it a lot, you can hit the throws like almost 100% of the time. But even then I still surprise myself because I sometimes end up missing throws when I don't expect to. Because I practice this fight a lot and usually in practice I can always hit it like 3 out of 3 but in runs you never know what can happen. You can sometimes miss like 3 throws for no reason. So basically I, I like to commit to certain bombs every time that like I always commit to these 3 bombs every single time. So then I know which ones I'm aiming for, I don't just aim at a random bomb. And also I let Bowser bounce after he hits each bomb, so then he's closer to the one I'm aiming for. So hit all three throws, and you got yourself a PB. So there you go. So the final time of this run, 152.49. Pretty insane time. That might have even been a 152.48, but I'm not that bothered about retiming it because it's a segmented run anyway. But there you go, this is my 120 star tutorial, and it just shows that you don't need crazy strats, crazy movement, insane like gameplay and grinding to get a 152. You can just get a 152 like that. Well technically you will still need to practice a lot and learn all these strats, but yeah, it's, it's honestly not as hard as I thought to get a 152. I was actually really surprised making this, like I was saying, I thought the final time would be like a 158, maybe 157. Like if I played well, but 152 is absurd with these strats and I'm really happy to present this. Something I found really weird as well researching this is I can only find one 120 star tutorial that was made and it was made by a one all star fan for life. I'm pretty sure that's what his name is. I think his real name's Bebop Bandit and it's in 1 hour 51 minutes and it's more for like intermediate players and it was made like 7 years ago. And the funny thing is a lot of the strats and routes and stuff are outdated now, but it's basically the same philosophy as this run, that movement is really important and strats don't matter as much. Uh, it's just really important and I'm really surprised that more people haven't made tutorials for this game because this is like the biggest speed game and there isn't any 120 star tutorials apart from this one and the other one that uh, Bebop Bandit made. I would have thought loads of people would have made 120 tutorials because it's such a big game, but apparently not. Like, there's 16 star and 70 star tutorials, but no 120 tutorials. But there you go, we got another 120 star tutorial on YouTube now, so feel free to use it. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe if you're new around here. Please comment below if it's helpful and comment your PBs even, because I'm always interested. And yeah, I hope you enjoy using this tutorial, and if anyone else finds it helpful, please share it to them if anyone else wants to use it, because it means a lot to me.